Welcome back for another Top Notch video, guys. This week we're going to be talking about the 27th of August through September 1st going into the holiday weekend. With this week, we uh, cover TSP, stocks, brokerage, IRAs. If you have any of these accounts, this is the channel for you. Some of the funds we follow are the uh, major indices, such as the C, S, I, and F fund for TSP users. And for those that follow the major indices with your brokerage accounts or Roth IRA or your IRAs or 401ks, is the indices followed with the ETF, IVV, VXF, EFA, AGG. What this follows is the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, international markets, and bonds. So let's get right into it. We go over a general overview of these funds to begin with, and then we kind of go a little more in depth with each one of these funds with a final kind of overview of what we are doing. So the first thing we always talk about is uh, TSP talks, kind of general charts, because they have some good things there. Tom puts this information out, so just uh, go over some things here. With uh, the S&P 500, we did see a breakout from its uh, long-term trend, so that was a good thing. Now, we uh, on Friday, we uh, we saw kind of it testing that line. Keep in mind, we do have a gap here at 280.75, uh, so we could see it come down to fill those gaps. Uh, what we've seen for most of this year is it has come to fill a lot of those gaps going up, so just keep that in mind. We are above a lot of our moving averages though and we do have some the volume should be picking up here in September and October we are up on our line here that being said the only other chart we want to point out is bonds and with that AGG or the F fund is just doing okay guys it, it, the returns all year have been sitting uh, 106 to 10 uh, it hasn't even got back to 107 so it's just moving back and forth a lot of this period it is doing well in the charts, but just not outperforming our stocks like we always talk about. That being said, let's look at the actual numbers for what we had this week. So if you watch our YouTube channel um, slash uh, see us on Facebook or on Twitter, we did make a short term move towards the end of the week to the G fund for a very, very short amount of time. Uh, charts are doing very well, but we just wanted to see if we could try and beat that S fund out. We are above all the other funds just trying to get ahead of the S fund for the year and I think we'll then park it in the S fund probably for the rest of the year for the week uh, we did see almost a percent gain for this week August in general had uh, just an incredible month guys with the C fund gaining 3.26 percent and the S fund gaining four four and a half percent the I fund like we did we transferred uh, August 1st out of the I fund and we're glad that we did it had a terrible month, um, and even bonds did well this month with a, a small gain. But once again, the indices or the equity funds outperformed bonds. And of course, uh, we had the G fund that just racked in very minimal. So that was a really, really good month for us to be in the CNS fund. We did very well there. We ended up with uh, just a little over 3% for the month of August. So that was awesome to have our funds there. And uh, hopefully we can continue with September and October being great months. So let's move right into the charts, but I just want to bring up our spreadsheet and I'll show that to you real quick. So for our channel, as you can see, we are sitting, so the major indices, top best indice we have is the S fund or VXF. And for uh, we had a majority of our funds in VXF, as you can see for the month of, this is as of August 31st, uh, we gained 3%. Anytime we gain 3% in a month, it's really good. It's kind of rare to gain that much percentage in one single month. And we've had one, two, three months now with over 3% gain, so that's incredible. Um, with that being said, as you can see, um, for the month, there they are, 3.2% and 4.57% and were gained for those two funds alone. We gained 3.1%, so not too far behind the indices. Overall for the year, we're sitting at 12.34 for um, our monthly averages all averaged up. Um, our yearly average is lower because when you factor in the the amount of cash that we put in monthly, it kind of screws up the percentage a little bit, and the TSP uh, fees are in there as well. So that's that percentage is just a little bit different from our year or from our monthly percentage, and this is what the TSP grabs it off of. So for the year, we're sitting at 12.34%. Uh, and here they're sitting at the top indices, sitting at 12.84%. So we're sitting about uh, 44, 54, 64, 74. Uh, we're about a, a half percent behind the, the, the best indices so far. So that's not bad at all, guys. 
And then if you look at uh, our PIP for the year or our, our 12 month return rate, if we do that, take the last 12 months. So last 12 months for the year, we are sitting at 16.88% return rate for a 12 month period, which is really good. Um, that is incredible. It, it is behind some of the other major indices, but um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with what we've gained for the last 12 months. So that being said, let's go right into our charts. So as you can see, we'll start with the C fund or IVV. For this last week, we did see uh, some nice gains and then some a little consolidation here at the top. They haven't redrawn their lines yet, so we're kind of waiting that for Finviz to do that. Still ahead of all the moving averages, and we have not come close to this bottom line here. My biggest concern is we had this gap back here. I don't think we'll see that gap be filled, but I do think we'll see this gap be filled here. And so. We temporarily move to the G fund until we see the uh, fund come down to hit about 290, and then we'll jump right back in. I can see that easily hitting 290 early next week. Um, just one or two, maybe one or two down days would do it. And so we want to be on our game to jump back into the indices when that happens. On a chart perspective, we're looking at IVV. On a weekly chart perspective, it is just doing fantastic. We had a weekly fake out here, and it's been going up ever since. Blue line is above red line. No concerns at all. If you're a buy and holder, this is a very good period for you to be in this fund. Even on a two-day chart, we have we had a fake out here back on the 16th of August, and it has continued to rise um, ever so often. On a four-hour chart, which is what we're looking at, that's why we got on the G fund just real quick, we did see that line cross, uh, and that's why we got out. As soon as we see this line come back though on a four hour chart, which means we have to monitor it every day, uh, we are going to get right back in this fund. So we just have to be very careful with that because we don't want to miss out on any future gains. I don't know how fast it will come back. Sometimes it comes back within a couple days, some days it takes a week or so. The last time we, we uh, rotated down from a four hour chart, it took from the 10th to the 16th, so about five or so days to come back. So uh, we are one day in on this uh, IVV chart, so we'll see how that goes, and we'll be watching very closely into next week. Moving on to our next chart, that is VXF or the S fund. The S fund did uh, break its major top or its major indice. I don't think we'll see this fund come back below that fund. It is um, holding pretty solid above that trend line, and we are above all our major tops. The Next low I could see it maybe hitting is possibly maybe where this uh, the moving average and the trend line meet up. Other than that, I don't I don't think it I don't think we'll see that go down for a while. Uh, we do have a little bit of gain here, so we're seeing a little bit of consolidation, kind of like we had some gain here. Then we had some some consolidation here. Saw a cup and handle here, cup and handle here. Out of the cup and handle, we saw that growth. So. We'll see where that goes. We did move out of this fund here as well, just very, very shortly. I'll show it to you on the charts. On a weekly chart, uh, we just came out and doing very, very well on that weekly chart. Typically, we follow the weekly charts. but um, And then this is our two-hour chart, our two-day chart, and it's doing very well as well. The chart that we decided to go with this week was the four-hour chart, so we have to watch this very closely. If this chart comes back, um, for gains, which it's not really, um, didn't take as much of a dive as we thought it would. Um, as you can see, we're only, uh, we went from negative 336 to negative uh, 440, uh, 147. If we see this to take a positive, uh, positive gains off of this based off trend lines and whatever, whatnot, um, we'll probably have to get right back into this chart. I, I just didn't see any loss off this chart since, um, and we haven't seen any loss off this chart for a while. The last time we really saw any major dip with this was back on the 16th of July. So it's been a long time. Um, and we'll just see what happens. Uh, if, if we're wrong, we're wrong. The, the, the thing with the stocks is if you're wrong, you don't want to stay wrong. So if we're wrong, we just get right back in. We take a little hit on our percentage and we keep trucking. Moving on to international markets, IV, V. EFA or the I fund. Uh, we've been seeing this kind of in a bear market and it is truly a bear market. It is doing, it's staying within its trading range and it's continuing to make lower highs and lower lows. Uh, we've seen this a number of times. We did try to get into this fund towards the end of July just to capitalize off its uh, bear market gains. We did end up doing that. 
but then we got out August 1st and we're very happy that we did that. As you see, it took a dip in August and towards this last week it hit the top of its trend line and sure enough, it started to bounce back down and it's um, not a place to have your money at this time. It's it's continuing to decline on um, just, it's just not doing well. So when we uh, see funds that aren't doing well, we stay out of those funds. Even on the charts, if we look at it with EFA on a weekly chart, it's supposedly coming out of its weekly chart, but that blue line is below the red line, so that's why we are not in that fund at all. And we, like I said, I, I would need to see this be positive probably with it being in a bear market on a weekly chart before I would get involved with it. Um, or a very, very short-term move, which we did do back in July. But it, it just hasn't broken positive since um, very, very shortly. It, it not even I wouldn't I wouldn't even say in May it broke positive. It barely put pushed its head above that red line. So really back in February, it's been negative for pretty much the entire year for the most part. And it just continues to decline. So we stay out of that fund. Last but not least, we have AGG. With AGG, um, this fund is just so interesting because it 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 looks like it wants to come back, but it's it's just not gaining a whole lot. Um, I mean if you take this line here, the, the 106.50 uh, line, and you ran it all the way across this fund, as you can see, it is just not, I mean, it took a plunge back in April, and it hasn't, it hasn't even made it back there, and it's just, it's just, it's just a struggling fund. It's not doing very well. There's not a lot for the trend lines that we can go off of, and even on our charts, if we look at those for AGG, on a weekly chart, we are kind of sitting flat even for the week, so uh, that's not good. Uh, we were hoping that it would probably try to break out of that, and but we're a flat even week, and if we look at the two-day chart, it's starting to decline again. So I would just stay out of AGG bonds. I wouldn't have any of my money in bonds at this time. It's just not a place to be. So that's why we did a short-term move to the G fund, and I'll show that to you now um, with that. So uh, with our moves, what we had is um, we only use the G fund in case we're trying to gain a little bit on our equity funds, which what we're trying to do this next week, uh, moving into September real quick. September is historically one of the worst months uh, for the stocks. And we're not speculating. We're just going off that four hour chart, hoping to pick up just a little bit of gain off the indices so we can try and say that we have all funds beat for the year. So far, we have all the funds beat except for the S fund. We did the G fund. Uh, be looking for Facebook and Twitter posts about moving back into the C and S fund shortly into next week. I, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if we got into those funds very quickly. Um, of course, new allocation, new funds. Uh, if you're military, you get a new paycheck. We are still putting that into the S fund. And like I said, we'll be probably moving this G fund back into the S fund very, very shortly. Not even, I would just a couple... I would say probably that first week or the second week for sure. So just be watching that very closely. And um, if you missed our G Fund move last week, uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter and Facebook so you can catch those. We posted on both of those as soon as we make the move. And um, on last week's video, we put it in a comment, usually when we make a move, if it's during the week. Other than that, guys, uh, really appreciate your support. What do you? Th uh, my question for you guys is what do you think about our G Fund move? Do you think it will work out? And uh, please like, subscribe, or share the video. And that's just another top-notch video. We'll see you guys next time.